The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN. Wednesday morning already, June 1st. We kick off June trading. Markets picking things off and kicking things off in positive territory. Let's take off that Fibonacci for a little bit of clarity here. You look at an S&P. Currently trading up 16 points right now at 41.47. Talk about a little volatility yesterday. We zoom in on the trading day. Accelerations in both directions. At about 2.20 p.m. Eastern time, you're trading at 41.65. The market dives to negative territory. We make that same exact low that we had at about 3 p.m. Eastern time of about 41.25. You trade up 30 points, back down 30 points. Right now, though, you can see overnight, last night, 9 p.m. Eastern time, we were just where we traded at at the peak before the market sold off for about the final 30 minutes of trading. And just in the last basically 30 minutes, you had the S&Ps trading to 41.53, 41.55, about the high there, the lower part of that range, about 41.25. And the S&Ps were positive by 4 tenths percent. NASDAQ 100, we're positive by 50 points, 12,696 right now. You get the Dow up almost 200, 33,168. The Russell up by eight points this morning. That's half a percent. Bitcoin holding up relatively well after being in some doldrums of 28,000 last week. We're sitting just near 31,725 for Bitcoin. You have Ethereum inching towards 2,000. We were above that level briefly uh early what's that last night yeah last night above 2000 briefly for ethereum crude continuing to rise how about 119.98 yesterday you sell off to a 114 handle this morning we're back to a 116.39 handle we'll be talking to our man teddy kegstat from forex trading dash on lock.com at 40 past the hour it's already wednesday uh short week wednesday coming up quicker than usual gold contract up two dollars right now but check out that pop on the session man you talk about a pop gold Early this morning, had traded all the way down to 1830 and change, 183020 to be exact. And then, boom, in the last hour, man, gold rocking $20 to the upside up to 1850. Uh, and we jump to notes and bonds. An important day. As we kick off June, we kick off the balance sheet of the Fed rolling off. And uh, we'll get into some of the specifics of that in a moment. We have the 10 year right now basically flat. But you see the action. We were down to 119.03. We're up to 119.15 right now. The 10-year, basically flat. All right, let's jump to what we have going on, and that's the headline to kick things off. The Fed starts the quote-unquote experiment of letting $8.9 portfolio shrink. First assets will mature without reinvestment on June 15th. Officials, quote-unquote, uncertain about market impact of accelerated runoff. If anybody tells you that they're certain of how it's going to go when the Fed lets $9 trillion roll off their balance sheet without reinvesting that money, when they've been reinvesting it for a long time, what, decade plus at least? Yeah, you cannot be certain how this is going to go, folks. Not even close. Uh, they're about to start shrinking that $9 trillion balance sheet after doubling in size through asset purchase purchases in the first two years of the pandemic. I mean, almost just the, the numbers, video game style numbers sometimes, as I'm Kevin Hinks likes to say. The balance sheet will be reduced at a pace that's almost twice as fast as the last financial crisis. The process officially commences on Wednesday, June 1st, kicks off June. The first sec uh, securities won't run off until $15 billion worth of them mature on June 15th. So on June alone, in June alone, June 15th, you got about $14.9 billion that will roll off. On June 30th, you can see three different mature, uh, mature securities maturing, 13.3, 15.4, and 4.6. So that is over $30 billion combined. Total is $48.25 billion. Here's the deal. $30 billion is what they're capping it at for treasuries, Okay. They're capping the monthly runoff of securities right now at $47.5 billion. They're capping it at $30 billion for treasuries. They're capping it at $17.5 billion for mortgage-backed securities. So you can see, even on the roll-off right now, you're still going to have the Fed investing with a bid 
of $18.25 billion they're going to put back into the secure Treasury security market this month alone. It's an interesting way to phrase things when you're rolling off, but they're 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 coming fast. It's uh, twice as fast as the last financial crisis and still going that fast. They have to invest almost $18 billion back into Treasury securities because they have so many on the books. That's what I was trying to get out. Uh, remarkable. Now, in September, they're going to double what they're rolling off the books to $95 billion. Okay, so it's June. You're going to go June, July, August, three months. You're going to get $30 billion coming off of the Treasury securities, 17.5 on the mortgage-backed. 47.5 is the total. That's going to double in September. That compares to a peak of $50 billion a month when the Fed performed the exercise starting in 2017. Folks, here's a lesson. You know, there, there are so many times when the market was doing so well and we, we were not able to raise interest rates uh, because the market freaked out over free money disappearing. In good times, you have to pull that. Because we see that what happened here is we came into a pandemic and we were already pretty low on the interest rate totem pole. You really had a big problem having to pull those down. Rates went negative across the globe in different areas. Our interest rate was near zero. Uh, yeah, it's a tough deal to say the least. And that's part of what's going on here. Now we have $9 trillion on the balance sheet. Uh, and this is the first month. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, yeah, the balance sheet. To about 4.5 trillion by the time it stopped buying at the end of 2014. Okay, it then waited three years before allowing it to begin to shrink at the end of 27, 2017. But they only got it down to 3.8 tr trillion by 2019. So it's quite a quote unquote experiment. We'll see where it goes from there. Uh, but they kick off this month, which is remarkable. Nine trillion on the balance sheet. And you're going to lose $47 billion this month. So you're going to go three months. So that'll be $150 billion that we'll lose by September. September, you'll start losing $90 billion a month. And we'll see where they go from there. All right. We got some earnings last night. Salesforce, they're rocking it higher today. Raises for profit forecast on resilient demand for business software. Revenue gains 24% in the quarter. 24%. Staggering number when they're dealing with billions. $7.41 billion. <clears throat> fueled by their acquisition of Slack. What do they pay for Slack? $27 billion or something like that. They raised the annual profit forecast, signaling demand for business software is holding up despite a broader downturn from major tech firms. So interesting to see how that goes. Salesforce, uh, very business facing, right? They're not uh, selling to a lot of individual consumers, maybe that's a different scenario compared to the likes of some of those companies, especially the companies relying on ad dollars because they are servicing individual consumers uh, on a general versus Salesforce. Fiscal year earnings, 474 to 476, an increase of 12 cents a share from the prior forecast. Revenue for the year, $31.8 billion. Uh, the market was looking for 468 a share, so a beat there. And yes, they did. Slack, $27.7 billion is what they paid for Slack. Last month, however, the company joined tech sector peers in slowing down hiring. So Salesforce said full-time equivalent positions rose 30% from a year earlier to 77,810. That's quite a number. We'll finish this up. We'll talk to our man, Kevin Hinks. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&P futures positive by 21 points right now. You have all the markets in the green. NASDAQ 100 positive by 77. The Dow up 223. Russell up 11 points. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, 12 noon Eastern time right here on Tiger TV. Fast market from the TD Ameritrade Network with your host, Kevin Hinks, Tom White. They walk you through the day's market action, talking about hypothetical trade setups, folks, using options, using defined risk. Kevin Hinks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Yeah, you know, it's interesting uh, day, interesting uh, start to the week, that's for sure. A uh, little bit of surprise, good news out of Salesforce overnight. That, that That's good. Some of the economic data yesterday was more positive than expected. I think what's interesting about the rest of this week, Tommy, is starting at 10 o'clock Eastern with the jolts number, we're going to get a serious look at employment. In, in, in the U.S. We've got jolts coming out today. We've got ADP and non -farm, er, and uh, jobless claims coming out tomorrow. Then non-farm payrolls and unemployment on Friday. We're going to get a really good look at the labor market in terms of its overall strength. So, um, you know, earnings are getting a little thin, as you know. But, you know, we've still got a couple good ones. Salesforce was a good one. Lululemon and CrowdStrike. Uh, tomorrow, today, uh, Light Folio is going to look at Chewy, uh, the uh, online pet food supply company, and then so then we're going to look at we're, we're going to look at some airlines. I think Del, uh, Delta got a nice upgrade in guidance today for, from from the home uh, base. So you know we're going to trade what's moving here, but obviously you know Tommy, the first week of every month is non-farm payrolls. That's the number one data point of the month. That's what we'll be uh, looking forward to in a couple days. It's pretty interesting, man, how uh, there's kind of no lulls right now. I mean, you talk about some earnings, maybe a little bit of a lull compared to some of those gangbuster weeks that we have where you get, you know, a third of the S&P reporting. But as you mentioned, we get ADP numbers, we get jolts, we have the non-farm payroll number, so important for the wage data right now and the jobs number itself. And then, Kevin, we come into a Fed meeting, what, two weeks from today. So not, th not that long that we get another Fed meeting coming down the line. I was reading a story on Bloomberg this morning just talking about June kicks off, the balance sheet roll-off. 
They're going to roll off, I think it's $47.5 billion when you combine treasuries and mortgage-backed securities. Treasuries, Kevin, are going to be $30 billion of that a month for a few months. This month alone, I think it's like $48 billion are rolling off. The point being, it's pretty interesting that they have such a balance sheet right now that as they ease into you know, trimming that balance sheet, the Fed is actually still going to be reinvesting, I think, $18 billion of securities that are going to roll off this month alone. Uh, are you watching that story? What's your take? Are interest rates kind of priced in? We've been talking about them, but pretty interesting. Uh, June's the month. Here we go. And we'll see what happens, man. Yeah, well, I think interest rates are key. And, and what do I mean by that? Here's what I think is the key to having a good summer in terms of the stock market. What you want is quiet, quiet out of interest rates, quiet out of the U.S. dollar, quiet. It would be great if we could get some quiet out of crude oil. Um, I don't know if we will. I think crude oil is going to have a I think grains and commodities like that in terms of crude oil and grains are going to have a historic summer, Tommy. And I traded I was standing at at the board of trade. Uh, trading grains in the drought of 2012. And remember, Tommy, we're at some record levels in grain markets, and we haven't even hit summer yet, right? We're, we haven't even hit any weather market or any disruption in planting or, or anything like that. So there's a lot of volatility that could take place in the grain markets this summer. And I think crude oil is going to be incredibly volatile. There's a an OPEC meeting tomorrow. There's rumors going around about OPEC and output that, you know, it, ha- it had kind of a volatile overnight trade in crude oil because of some of that. So I think uh, this is going to get a little volatile, Tommy, in, in terms of this summer, in terms of some of these commodities. And that's going to, you know, leak over into the stock market for sure. Yeah, I mean, the commodity sector, man, you talked about it. Uh, and I think I saw the first name storm out there somewhere in the Atlantic. Some, somebody told me, I mean, June 1st, I guess we're coming into it. Uh, the bad ones uh, really get into the late in the summer as you start getting those warm, warm waters. But yeah, for the things I've been hearing too, Kevin, I, I saw one report, man, that says this this storm season could be a rough one. Some of the currents in in the Gulf of Mexico, some of the heats of those waters, man, folks. And if you, I mean, that Gulf of Mexico just turns into a warm bath by the end of August, and uh, some of those streams. So we'll see, man. But has the potential to shake things up. Uh, you talked about some of the stocks, Kevin, coming up. Is that what you guys going to be talking about today? Do you guys have the timeline yet, or are you guys still formulating what you're going to be talking about coming up at twelve today? Yeah, Tom White's on vacation, so I'm hosting the show. We're definitely going to do Chewy in the in the in the um, first segment. We're definitely going to do Delta Airlines in the final segment. Trying to figure out based on the news coming out what we should cover in the first nice. segment here. Um, yeah, haven't figured that out yet, but it'll be something high profile. I can bet. I can guarantee that. Chewy, man, quite a chart. Up to 120 about a year ago. You're down to 2480, basically back to pre-COVID levels. Uh, yeah, Delta out with some positive news, I think, this morning. They were a little bit higher. They are a little bit higher, up to 42 bucks from 4169 uh, That just chopping around, man. Well, Kevin, we appreciate the time. We appreciate the conversation, as always, man. We'll be watching at 12 today, and we'll definitely be watching with you in the host chair, man. We'll be watching. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Have a great day. You too, Kevin. Folks, tune in every yep. trading day, 12 noon Eastern time. We kick off June trading. You heard the stocks are going to be talking about Chewy, Delta, and uh, they'll have that third segment coming up. All right. Checking back to the markets right now, folks. s and is drifting up a little bit. We're up by 22 points right now in the session. We're sitting at 41.53. You're coming right up to the highs we had at about 9 p.m. Eastern time. Interesting. We're going to open right at the highs. I mean, we got five minutes and five seconds exactly, folks, and the market is opening right at the high that we sold off at at 3.30 p.m. Eastern time. You know, fundamentals work, folks. Technicals work. You combine them. It's a great thing. You can't tell me that this is not an important area considering that's right where we were when we sold off yesterday. Yeah, we made it higher a little bit pre-market, but interesting. That's where we opened, 41.55, right where we were at overnight highs, right where we were at the 3.30 high as well. Uh, we just some positive earnings. Salesforce, they're going to open up what? Yeah, more than 10%, 11% on the open for Salesforce. We jump around to some of the other companies. Amazon had quite a day yesterday, right? What was Amazon up? Like almost 5% or something silly? You're going to continue that run today. Up another almost 2% right now to 2450 Amazon uh, shareholders approving the 24-1 stock split. I believe that happens 
June 6th, what's that? Yeah, Monday. So this is the last week. Amazon's going to be trading at 2400 bucks and change right now. You'll be splitting 20 for one come Monday trading, June 6th for Amazon. So that was a big pop yesterday. You're continuing that pop today for Amazon, up about 25 bucks. Let's check out some of the other highly followed stocks. Tesla shares this morning. You're flat at 758 for Tesla. We jump to the conjoined twin of Twitter. <laughs> Twitter, barely in the positive to 3963. Going to be interesting to see how that saga plays out for Twitter. We jump to some of the other FANG stocks. Microsoft. Microsoft probably getting a lift uh, with CRM a little bit higher, potentially. Cloud, business to business. Microsoft up, what's that? Yeah, three, three dollars, four dollars, up more than a percent in the pre-market. We jump over to Google shares. Google up about 20, 25 bucks this morning and we Finish the roundup with Apple. Apple shares up about a dollar to one fifty on the dot. Stay tuned, folks. We got the opening bell coming up. I'll be right back in three minutes. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. Tom O'Brien has just announced a live Timing the Trade webinar Friday, June 10th from 9 a.m. until 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Join Tom O'Brien for five hours of live education as he teaches you his trading methodology right from his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System. In this live webinar, Tom O'Brien will be teaching you his entire trading system, including quality volume, ABC structures, Fibonacci confluence zones, cause and effect, swing points, and more. We will be limiting this class to 40 attendees, so please do not delay and reserve your seat today for this special live event with Tom O'Brien. All attendees will also receive a physical copy of his book, The Art of Timing the Trade, an $88 value, mailed to you, along with a free month of his daily newsletter, Market Insights, a $169 value. For all the details and to reserve your seat today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. we got markets open. The S&P opens right basically the area I was talking about. You're talking about the area right where the highs we were yesterday at about 3 p.m. Eastern time. This is a 15-minute chart. We're trading at 41.55. That's the overnight high. That's the high where we sold off from at about 3.30 in the afternoon yesterday. NASDAQ 100. We're up about 107 points right now. Pretty similar area. We didn't make it to that price level overnight, but the NASDAQ 100, right where you were intraday yesterday at any price level, 12,745. And you see, I mean, we were moving 150 points in the NASDAQ 100, like nothing yesterday in a half hour's time. Dow up 242 right now, 33,216. That's being helped by Salesforce. I'm sure Salesforce, a member of the Dow. 
and let's jump over to Salesforce, see how they're opening up. 11.9%, that's a pop for you, man, up $20. You're up, well, in the 1891 to 179. This thing has had quite a pullback, though. You check out the three-year weekly for the full context of the run. You were just at 311 seven months ago. You dive down, that's a little bit of a pop. Uh, in the long term, I am a believer in this equity, folks. The cloud, you know, some serious multiples at some of these levels. I think, you know, if you didn't already know that scenario, hopefully we all learned a little lesson about multiples when they get a little out of control, especially in a rising rate environment. Uh, NVIDIA, the poster boy for that as well, trading from 346 back down to a recent low of about 157. That low actually 155.67. We're up to 188. Now, some of the other companies, I was just checking in on ARC. So ARC and this is just one random site that I pull up occasionally to see the holdings, to see the trades. Uh, Zoom is now the number one holding for ARC. They have 3% ownership of the entire company. They only own one-tenth of 1% 1 of Tesla, even though Tesla is 9% of the company. Basically, 9% is Zoom as well, just above that level. But you see the difference because of the market cap of Tesla. Roku, they have a 6.5% position in Roku, uh, the other one that they have a big one in, Exact Sciences, just pulled that one up. Oof, that chart is a mess. And CRISPR, 8.79% position. CRSP is their symbol. Let's jump over that one. All these stocks decimated. Part of the reason why her stocks have gotten so decimated. Cut by a quarter. CRISPR up to 220. I mean, she had quite the run, man. You know, it was built on Tesla, but it was built on these, too. It was built on CRISPR. CRISPR, Exact Sciences, uh, Coinbase, uh, Tesla, of course, Zoom, Roku. Now, Roku, as I said, she got a six position, six percent position in Roku, down to ninety-five bucks. I mean, maybe that thing's found a, a low. You see it chopping around. This is a weekly, right? What's that? Five straight weeks we've been chopping around. Yeah, we have some tails that go a lot lower. You put this thing on a daily to see the price levels down to seventy-five bucks a couple times. We've bounced from this area. The one worrisome thing about all of these equities, folks, is you get the market sitting at 4162. We were just trading at 3800. Okay, you get a pullback in the S and P's. You get a pullback in the general market, which is completely feasible when you've just bounced almost 10 percent in the overall market, right? I mean, yeah, we're just shy of about a 10 percent pop from the lows of the S and P. We were down to 3807, a 380 point pop from there brings us to 4,200. You pop 10% in the indices. So that's the most worrisome thing about any of these growth stocks. Roku, Zoom, you know, you try and buy it here, this market gets slammed, you're gonna get slammed as well. We pull up ARC, 44.75, you were down to 35 bucks, okay, on some of those lows. But at some point, man, even Roku, it's one that I keep coming back to. I think they have 66 million customers they service. They are the portal to streaming for 66 million people. You think about the players in the streaming industry, if they could ever figure out a way to capitalize that type of reach to consumers, okay, which is completely possible, you jump over to the Analyze tab, you're only talking about a company right now at 95 bucks that is valued with a market cap of $13 billion. For some context, Apple has 16.5 billion shares outstanding. So basically, Apple already today has gained $24 billion in market cap. For the market cap they gained today, they can almost buy two Rokus. Now, they'd have to pay a premium. You get the point. But something to keep in mind with some of these stocks. Zoom's a different scenario. Uh, I don't see them getting purchased to the same degree because you jump over to Zoom, even at $110, you're still talking about a company at $33 billion valued, three times the size of Roku, and you demand a premium, I'm sure. Uh, they make money, folks. The multiples just got a little silly. But let's just see the P.E. because it's not so silly anymore because they're not being valued for the growth that they were once were. Uh, here we are. The P.E. ratio, 21. 21 right now listed. I'm not sure if that's a, you know updated continually on everything, but 21. That's not a crazy P.E. for a company like Zoom. They might not be growing to the degree they thought they were when they were at, what, 590? 588.80. But nonetheless, you're buying a company that's in a nice area that's making money with a PE of 21. And they're up 3.1% right now. And uh, they are the largest holding for ARC. But if the market gets hit, they get hit as well. It's not a coincidence this thing was just down to a price of 79 bucks. You're $30 higher from the lows, but you were lifted by the earnings you got in late May. All right, market's catching a lift right now. You're up 29 points in the S&P. 
Now, putting the S&P back on a daily, something to keep your eye on, man. You know, when I saw this market turn around, you're right at the 382, folks. Keep your eye on the 382 and the 618. That's what I love to trade. It seems like at least if you have your back against the wall and you have a trading plan and you have a price level that you can keep in mind, look at the 382, okay? And the scary thing about where this thing traded to is you trade up to a 382. Yes, you had some real volume, okay, on yesterday's day. But you're talking about volume on the ES of 2.3 million at the low. And what do we do? 2.1 million up there at the highs. You don't have to compare those two. But the scary part is that all you did is you traded back into the lows we had from February to March. That's all we did. All we did is got back to the lows of March when the market was already in trouble at 4,200. You traded all the way back to above 4,600 before you got a 700 point leg down. Okay. Yes, we've got a pop. Yes, we're at the 382. Maybe you chop around a bit at this level. But boy, keep your keep your eyes on it, folks, because if we ever get another leg down, okay, A to B, C to D, 4,800 to about 4,100. That line hits 4,101, okay? So you have about a 700 point A to B, C to D. A to B, A is 4,800. B point, about 4,100. The C point, we'll call it 4,650. Okay, you actually trade down 850 points. If you take where the, the bottom of the candles are potentially, pretty similar line of about 700 points down, 700 points down. Now what we did do here, checking out the Fibonacci scale of the first bounce, okay? That bounce got well above the 618. So maybe, I don't know what was going on there, okay? Well above it, all we've gotten to is the 382 folks of this move down. And if you ever get another 700 point move down, you're talking about 3,500. OK, now you're talking about thirty five hundred potentially and thirty five hundred. If you take the entire move of the Fibonacci level. Brings you right to the 50 percent. It also brings you right to the highs that we had from 2020. OK, I'm not saying it's going to happen. We'll see how it goes with the Fed. But we have a Fed meeting coming up on June 14th and 15th. Two weeks from today, I believe we get another announcement, a press conference. And uh, yeah, we come into the Fed trimming the balance sheet to the tune of 30 billion in treasuries, 17.5 in mortgage-backed securities, and that's going to double in three months. Rates sitting at about 2.85 percent today. We'll see where that goes. S and P's right now up by 32 points, back to a 15-minute chart, right back to those highs we got intraday yesterday for the S and P's. We have the Nasdaq now above those levels. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, 12,804. You're looking at the Nasdaq. Climbing towards the overnight high we got over Memorial Day of about 12,883. Dow's up 214. Let's see if CRM gave up some of that gain. Nope, they're holding up well. CRM up 12.5%, up $20. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming back with our man, Teddy Kegstat. We'll be talking some Forex, some commodities. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. 
Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps right now, positive by 19 points, giving back some of those gains we had coming into the opening mark, but still positive by about half a percent. Let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstat. We talk to Teddy, folks, every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. You can reach Teddy every trading day at his website, forex-trading-unlock.com. Teddy Kegstat, what's happening, man? Good morning, Tommy. Good morning. Uh, so we have a few moves going on in the Forex market, Teddy. We have crude. Holding at some pretty lofty levels right now, coming off the Memorial Day weekend. We got some OPEC news potentially. Where do you want to kick things off this morning? Uh, well, why don't we talk about the crude and interest rate markets since they're definitely helping to drive what's going on in the currencies right now. We have a little flip in the dollar about to happen. So um, obviously Perfect. crude is trending higher, higher move highs and higher move lows, especially on the daily and the hourly. Um, I think we're going to continue to batter resistance. I think we're going to keep on probing those highs. I think we're going to definitely start to, uh, you know, the momentum is going to build. It's just going to keep on building. I see us at 120 to 125 in the not too distant future, without a doubt. So Yeah, I got the chart up on a daily. I mean, we just got above those recent highs, right? The only thing on that chart really is that initial spike to 130. Um, mm -hmm. What did we hit yesterday? Pretty close. Did we get to 120? 119.98 I have to on my chart. Yeah. yeah, the way the way we came out of the gate through the holiday with oil right now, the bulls are in place. You know that part of the that is definitely I think. I mean, higher move highs and higher move lows. What do you what, what else can you say? You know, until yep. we have some type of divergence at least from that to see some sort of neutral trade set up, I don't think that's going to happen. Um, then we also have the, the the treasury bond market and the ten year market where <clears throat> they had a very very big sell off. Now the interesting thing is that. The dollar has been basically in a, in a downside correction for the past couple of weeks. So the euro has been a little bit stronger than it had been, but not that much. The pound's been holding up, but a lot of other currencies have gained a little bit of ground. So they're all in a corrective phase. I think we're as this week into next week, we're coming into the end of that. So there still could be a dollar spike to the lows. Um, but right now, I think you're starting to find a bottom as far as with the dollar index, meaning that the euro is running out of gas. And that's the one, especially it's one of the strongest currencies out there. You know, it's the biggest in the dollar index. It's having trouble with resistance. You know, like it can't sustain a rally. You know, it had a nice corrective move over the past couple of weeks, but the momentum is waning. And I think that we're starting to see that dollar strength is going to come back in a very, very big way, especially as we head into, uh, you know, the, the middle of June and into July. Yeah, that euro US dollar, man, I had it on a daily, I put it on a weekly. I mean, just basically a straight drop since February 7th from 115 almost to 103.49, mm -hmm. so 103.5. Um, yeah, that's a bounce, but I hear you. I mean, if you if I put a trend line on that chart, you know, you're barely out of the downtrend. That's pretty steep mm -hmm. on the euro-US dollar. And the major trends are coinciding right now very well, where you have the dollar index correcting, you have the treasury bond market that's been correcting to the upside, you know, and, and, it's, as, and even with oil. So now as we have... 
the treasury bond market is starting to spike out and run out of gas to the upside and it looks like the bears are coming back you know that's the same thing that's going on with the dollar those bulls the dollar bulls are coming back the interest rate bears are coming back and as though if those two start to come together you know you're going to see bat definitely the euro is starting to collapse again and the and the US dollar swiss franc i think that's one to really watch out for because it came up, it went above parity and had a very big correction of, for, especially concerning if you look at most of the currencies, the yen and the and the and the uh, Swiss have corrected the most. Okay, and now I think yeah. they're going to go when they go back to the upside, they're going to make new highs. We're going to see the U.S. dollar Swiss above parity again. So that's a pretty good intermediate term trade. I mean, this is not going to happen over the next couple of sessions, but I guarantee you, especially the Swiss. It's not going to just trend and grind higher like a you know a quarter point over a day over the course of weeks when it's going to start to move and then you're going to have a couple of days where you're going to probably see like two basis handles without a doubt you know as it starts to get yeah. towards parity. That is quite a chart, man. From April fourth, ninety two cents to just above parity and then back to ninety six in a heartbeat. That's some volatility, mm -hmm. man. Right. There's a nice swing um, trade there. You talked about the interest rate. Pretty remarkable. I had the chart of the 10-year even up here. You're sitting almost back a couple months to, to where we were as you chopped around a bit. I was talking mm -hmm. about at the beginning of my program that the Fed's going to be rolling off the balance sheet starting in June, um, that the numbers they're using. It's pretty interesting. I was talking to man Kevin Hinks saying that, you know, they're going to be rolling off, I think it's $47.5 billion total. That's going to be $30 billion in Treasury securities and seventeen point five in mortgage-backed. But they can't. They're, they're, they have maturities expiring, Teddy, that are over the $30 billion. So they're still going to be reinvesting like $18 billion this month of Treasury mm -hmm. securities. Do you see that baked in? I asked Kevin a similar question, you know, because it's an important one, right? As in we're coming down the line here. Do you see that baked in or do you see rates potentially raising higher, rising higher as we come into a Fed hiking, hiking cycle? And we got another meeting in two weeks from today, I think they announced. Uh, yeah, actually, I do. I think like right now, if the bonds um, actually do get a rally, it's going to be one last head, head fake. I think that as we move into June and going into July, you're going to see the bonds trend a lot lower. And remember, these expirations that you're talking about also coincide with futures expiration. So you're going to have futures, options and cash deliverables expiring all at the same time. That's going to cause a lot of crazy volatility. And I, I would say probably from around June 10th to about June 25th, you know, like that that window of, of 14, 15 days, I think you're going to see a lot of erratic moves in the Treasury bond market. It's going to be really hard to gauge direction during that time because you're going to have an unloading of all these things. You know yeah. what I mean? So, I mean, and, and I know that's a dynamic a lot of people don't understand. We don't need to get in the mechanics of it. But that time frame of, of those expirations, especially combined with the cash, I think is really going to be a tough trade. So the trends are intact. You know, keep, stick to your guns on that. But be very careful if you're an intraday trader during that window. Yeah, I found it amusing. I saw one article was talking about, I think, maybe the minutes of the recent Fed meeting and saying that a couple of the <laughs> Fed governors were uncertain of how that type of a roll off would go. And I say, if, if anybody says you're certain, man, you're crazy. How could you be certain <laughs> you're rolling yeah. off something? You know, I mean, of course, we right. should be uncertain. Anybody that tells you they know how it's going to go, you at least got to be prepared for for um, some unforeseen situations mm -hmm. when you're talking about that type mm -hmm. of a roll off, man. Mm -hmm. Well, Teddy, we appreciate the time. We appreciate the conversation as always, man. And uh, we'll talk to you a week from today, man. Now, crude, let's finish it up. So we're sitting at, we got about 30 seconds, Teddy. Um, yeah. Crude at about 120. You talked about it last week saying, you know, playing this market mm -hmm. very difficult with the volatility when I ask you, maybe looking at some of the currencies. Could you talk about that again for a quick 30 seconds for the listeners sure. that didn't check it out, how you might be sure. able to trade crude? Go ahead. Absolutely. That goes with the U.S. dollar yen trade, the U.S. dollar Swiss trade for sure. As crude oil starts to rally, you're going to see they're, they're good. They're those That's giving strength to those two for sure. Be very careful with the U.S. dollar Canada. That's going to be very choppy as crude starts to rally. Awesome, man. And look at the chart of that yen, man. Yeah, quite a bounce in the last few days to 129.28, mm -hmm. uh, inching towards that 130 mark. Well, Teddy, man, we appreciate the time as always, the education, and we'll talk to you a week from today, man. Thanks, Tommy. See you next week. Okay, thanks. Folks, check Teddy out every trading day at his website, forex-trading-unlock.com. Does an outstanding job. And man, he's called this crude market outstandingly well, uh, to say the least been a bull for a long time we'll have to pull it up it's at least a year i think going back and we're sitting at 117.30 and yeah i would say from a technical perspective right now no signs of letting up in that crude market sitting basically at highs only that we've come about uh above 
in that one spike to 130. And maybe we got to challenge that high before crude can trade lower, sitting at 117.27. Back to the markets right now. S&Ps, you're sitting up by about 15 points, 41.60, 41.46. We'll be right back to finish up the show, folks. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps up 21 points right now. The NASDAQ 100 up 160 right now. Dow giving up some of those gains right now. Only up 100. Let's see how Salesforce is moving. They're going to be impacting that. Whoo, those Dow stocks must be selling off, man, because Salesforce is a Dow component. You're now up 15% in that equity of $23.71. Meanwhile, you've had the Dow drop off some of the gains uh, in there. Jumping around to some of the FANG stocks. Look at Amazon, man. Up 5% yesterday, up 4% today. <laughs> Quite a rocket ship from the lows that we had recently. I don't know if we got a 19 handle. Did we get a 19 handle? That might be the low of 2025, was it? It was. 2025 was the low we got about a week ago. And just like that, you're up 25% off the lows to 2496 on Amazon. We backed this thing up on a three-year weekly. You dive down to the pre-COVID levels, and that's where we bounce, man. Just remarkable. These growth stocks had to completely reverse all the valuation gains we had prior to covid after COVID highs, you give it all back and then maybe we get a pop. 
back over to Salesforce for a longer term time frame, they actually traded to where we were beginning of 2020, let alone you came into the pandemic in Salesforce at 195. You got below 160. This morning, we're up about 15% for Salesforce. And then NASDAQ kitchen a bit. Let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks. Apple up 1.7% right now. Maybe that's a cloud infrastructure deal with uh, if Salesforce is seeing that type of growth, maybe that's going to translate something. I'm not sure, but all the tech stocks, Microsoft, man, up more than 2%. Yes, you're still well off the highs, but those are some big numbers. Google, 2.8% to the upside. Let's see how Tesla's doing. Tesla shares up 1.2%. Some of the growth stocks I was talking about earlier. Zoom up about 2.7%. Roku up 2.6% right now. They were talking about the cannabis stocks in uh, the den earlier. Some great takes there saying it might be more difficult to make money in cannabis, folks. Uh, and I think that might be the truth. And the chart might be saying that. Canopy down another two tenths percent. That's a penny is all you're doing. You're trading flat, but you're trading flat at under five bucks for Canopy shares. We jump over to Delta as they revise their outlook to the upside. How about that? Delta down three percent right now. And they had some good numbers, man. The headline out of Delta raises revenue outlook with full planes and higher fares. They're down three percent. All right, folks, thanks so much for starting your trading day with me. We got our man Basil. He's coming up next. Larry at 11. Fast Market at 12. You heard him. They're going to be talking about Chewy. They'll be talking some Delta Airlines coming up. Live programming all day, folks. Have a great Wednesday.